All right, in this last video, we want to look at the number of solutions in a linear system, um, a linear system which has two equations and two variables. And typically, when we're dealing with two lines, we get one solution. Most of the work we've done, we've achieved one solution. But there are other possibilities. We will get one solution if the two lines are not parallel. If the two lines are parallel, then we could either get an infinite number of solutions if the two lines happen to be the same line. So what I have here is I have one line and then I have the other line right coinciding with it. So all points on one match all points on the other, so we have an infinite number of solutions. So we have parallel lines which are the same line. And then we have parallel lines, which are completely different lines, which have no points in common, and therefore no, no solutions. So the key to determining the number of solutions in a linear system is to consider the slopes of the two lines. If the slopes are different, the lines will coincide because they won't be parallel. If the slopes are the same, the two lines will be parallel, in which case you'll have an infinite number of solutions or no solutions, and you'll be able to distinguish between those because two of the lines will be the exact same line, the exact same equation, and the other two will have something different about them. They'll have a different uh, y-intercept. All right, so without solving, determine the number of solutions in each linear system. So we have two lines, and if I look at the slopes and y-intercepts of these two lines, and I can do that easily by rearranging the equations into the form y equals mx plus b. If I isolate y, I get negative x plus 3. So I have a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 3. On the second line, if I isolate y, I could swap the order of these two. So I have y equals negative 2x plus 2. I'd have a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 2. Well, since these two lines have different slopes, they will meet. They will not be parallel. So it would be one solution. All right, here's another example. The two equations look different. So let's um, rearrange these equations into the form y equals mx plus b just so we can uh, determine the slopes. So 6y is equal to negative 4x minus 10. If I divide by 6, negative 4 over 6, negative 2 thirds, minus 10 over 6, negative 5 thirds. There's my one equation. And let's do similar, similar for this. That would be negative 3y is equal to 2x plus 5. Divide both sides by negative 3. And what I end up realizing is that, oh, in fact, these two equations are the exact same equation. Not only do they have the same slope, but they have the same y-intercept. So they're exa the exact same line. So therefore, since they're the same line, they have all points in common. So therefore, there would be an infinite number of solutions. Because the two lines are the same line. Now there's just one more thing I want to throw in here. And we were asked to determine here the number of solutions without solving, but I just want to show you what happens if you do try to solve. So for example, um, since x and y and the constants are lined up vertically, I'm going to work with the elimination method here. I'm going to leave equation 1 the way it is. The equation 2, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So I'm going to get negative 4x minus 6y is equal to 10. And if I then add the two equations together, 
you're going to notice something unusual happen. Adding, I get zero. Adding, I get zero. Adding, I get zero. I get zero equals zero. What happens is I get no variables and I get a value equaling a value which is a true result. All right, when this kind of thing happens algebraically, when you solve a system and all the variables cancel out and you end up getting a result that's true, zero does equal zero, you get two numbers that equal to each other, that's an indication that in case you hadn't noticed it earlier, your two equations were exactly the same. Okay, you can see that if you multiplied both sides of one of these by negative one, the equations are exactly the same. They just look different. All of these equations are exactly the same. They just look different. So when you solve and the variables all cancel out and you get a true numerical result, that's an indication that your two lines are the same and that you have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, and the final possibility, you have two lines here which already are conveniently in the form y equals mx plus b. The slope of this line is 2. The slope of this line is 2. So these two lines are parallel. One has a y-intercept of 1, and so would look roughly like that. The other line has y-intercept of negative 5 and a slope of 2, so it looks roughly like that. The two lines are parallel. They have different y-intercepts. Therefore, because they're parallel and have different y-intercepts, there's therefore no solution. There's no point in common. Now again, let me show you what would happen if you did attempt to solve this algebraically. I'm going to subtract the equations to eliminate the y. So y minus y is 0, but 2x minus 2x is also 0 and then negative 5 minus positive 1 is negative 6. And so what I end up getting here is that 0 equals negative 6. Well, this isn't true. We know that's not true. So when you have a system that has no solutions and you attempt to solve it algebraically, what's going to happen is that the variables are going to cancel out, but you're going to get an untrue numerical result.